Hello, hello, beloved USU listener. I am so honored you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. I cannot tell you, oh my goodness, my friend, you are in for such a huge treat. Our guest today is one of the most positive, inspiring, beautiful souls that I have come into touch in tune with and connected with. And I can't wait for you to learn more about Caroline and about just literally how, how much goodness there is in this world within you. And we're going to talk about all kinds of interesting things today, energy and consciousness, and just put on your seatbelt. It's going to be such a fun ride. I'm taking notes. So remember, you can always check the show notes. So let me introduce you to our amazing, amazing, beautiful guest today. Caroline Corey is a writer, director, producer, and an award-winning filmmaker. She's a futurist and the visionary author of best-selling books on consciousness and energy medicine, topping the charts of consciousness, science, and mystical literature. As a child and throughout her life, Corey has had numerous ESP, extrasensory, and precognition experiences, which led to her to become deeply connected to existential topics, the study of consciousness, and the mechanics of the universe all my favorite topics. After teaching energy medicine and consciousness work for over a decade, Caroline founded Omnian Media, an entertainment and media platform that tackles various thought-provoking topics on the human condition and the nature of reality. In addition to writing and producing, Caroline continues to lecture and coach internationally on various mind over matter subjects and appears regularly as a guest expert on supernatural phenomena at major conferences and television shows, including the Unexplained and William Shatner and History Channel's popular series, The Ancient Aliens. Among several recent accomplishments, Caroline's latest film, Among Us, has won nine film awards and two nominations at various festivals around the globe. It is such an honor, such a pleasure to introduce you, Caroline, to have you here today. What a gift. I'm so excited to dive into all of these, all of my favorite topics. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Julie. I love your smile. You're like emanating light already. We haven't even started. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, I always say when my cheeks start to hurt in the first five minutes, I know I'm with somebody who's got amazing energy because <laughs> energy doesn't lie. Maybe we start there. Energy does not lie. It just Exactly. I mean, it's all about energy. Everything starts with energy. You know, the physical world emanates from energy. So, you know, if there is a before and after, it would be energy first, then the physical world. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there is so much to unpack here. I feel like where I'd love to start. So for some, I know might know you, others might not know you. I'd love to talk about what it was like growing up as you did with ESP, with this precognition, with the ability to tune in and tap in in a very, very powerful way, what that looked like and felt like as much as you're willing to share. Cause I know this is, um, something that I think uh, is going to be of interest to everyone. Yeah. So I started out at the age of five uh, when I had my first uh, experience that I remember. I mean, I think I had more before that, but this one was very significant and it had a huge impact on my consciousness because uh, I was just there <laughs> and all of a sudden there is these, this uh, group of beings uh, that just showed up and um, I could see them, hear them, sense them, you know, the whole thing. And the energy, speaking of energy, it was spectacular. It was like, oh my God, this is heaven. It's just like pure, unconditional love. And so, but there was a sort of a recognition, like something like that, I know this and this is who I am. So because of that, it wasn't scary. It wasn't weird. It was just like, oh, that's the way it should be. And so, so that connection, I realized that we were actually communicating telepathically. So they would tell me things and I literally could see that you know, they were kind of transferring information. It was like code. And then they, they told me, we are speaking 
telepathically. So if you want to continue this communication, you have to focus on what your brain is doing right now, um, you know, and so and ask to do it again. So you have to ask, they kept saying you have to ask. And so, so, you know, I'm like five years old, right? So I'm thinking, what is my brain doing? So I'm like, pressing, you know, like focusing, like concentrating, uh, you know, like, I want this, I want this. And so I kind of what was really happening, of course, now, like many years later, I was literally programming myself to remember how I was telepathically communicating through intention. That's the gist of it, you know? And so, so because of that, it, that experience stayed with me. And, the, and I remember you have to ask, you have to ask. And it ask like, it's not like you're asking permission. Asking meaning focusing your intention, everything starts with that. Things don't just happen. So that stayed with me. Of course, I'm five years old. People ask me, what did you tell your, did you tell your parents? And I didn't tell anybody because I didn't think it was anything special. I didn't think I was special. I didn't think I did anything special. I was like, oh, you know, that's what happens, you know? And so, so I didn't say anything. And it was a good thing because I kind of kind of kept in my own world as I grew up having these experiences, which didn't stop. Uh, I would have other experiences sometimes, like I would notice that, oh, I can see through the wall. I can see through, you know, on the other side of this door or something. And then I would kind of concentrate and then I would open the door and it would be exactly what I, you know, things like that. So I kept having these experiences. Um, and like I said, never talked about it until much, much later where I was like, wait, people aren't doing this. Like, this is not normal. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's not. Um, so I started asking the question, well, wait, well, if I was doing that spontaneously, but then the other person couldn't see what I saw, what is it that I did? What did my brain do to tap into this information and know what it is? Even though I never opened the door, I didn't know it was there. I would look at someone I knew like they had a headache or a stomach ache. They didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. And then I would ask and then they would say, oh, I have a headache or a stomach ache or I have this problem. So, so I started asking, so how does that work? You know, so by asking these questions, I got into the field of consciousness. I realized that it's all about consciousness. It's the consciousness that is doing the asking, the tapping, the communication, it's consciousness, it's not the brain. And so, you know, of course, fast forward, um, you know, many, many years, uh, I developed methodologies in um, healing, because I realized that I was healing people. Because it, see, what people don't understand is that it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. Once you know, how your consciousness works, then you can apply it to anything. You can apply it for healing, you can apply it for creating, you can apply it for remote viewing, you can apply it for telekinesis. You see what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I got onto this whole journey. That was a very long answer to your <laughs> question, but that's pretty much it. You know, it's fantastic. I, I <laughs> like just, I have so many questions. I'm like, Julie? <laughs> Yeah, and we'll go through each of them. We'll get to them. Well, and I, I, it's fascinating that even starting with you have to ask, and what that meant is really, it's we have to focus. We have yes. to set the intention. Yeah, focusing is so important. Otherwise, I mean, I'm even thinking energy could be all over the place. It's that. So even getting that lesson early on, I'm I'm hearing you know people. I'm list, hearing my listeners say, okay, wait a minute. Um, so how does this work? So how does this consciousness thing work? It's not the brain. Maybe we just, I know it starts kind of at the, 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 the starting point, but how would you, where is consciousness? 
Yes. I believe it is. And then I'd yes. love to talk about your healing modalities and then yes. more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so to me, of course, uh, the first, another very important thing that I understood that I was experiencing the information. I wasn't uh, understanding the information in an analytical way. Like, you know, like I read in a book, then I just kind of register it and try to process it and get it. It wasn't a mental process. It was an experiential process. So as I grew up, I was having these experiences and learning through being, through experiencing. So for example, I would look at someone and then um, you know, I would kind of feel everything they're feeling, but I would have the precision. Like, for example, I would feel like something's wrong with their liver. And mm -hmm. then my liver would tell me like exactly at what age, like something happened, you know, the dad left and then the mother got sick and then this and that. And then there was a drowning experience. It's like, like I could read the information as I was experiencing it. And of course it turned out to be true. I mean, that uh, obviously it, I could validate it after the fact. So how does that work? So don't forget, spawn, no, at f age five, nobody teaches you that stuff. You know, it's like when people say, yeah. And so, so, so from experiencing, I could experience that consciousness is at the base of all that is. It's like, if you can, you can think of it as the substance that make up all that is. It's part of everything, all aspect of existence. And from that emerges individual uh, pieces of consciousness, which is the individual person, the physical world. Everything is an aspect of this one substance. And so here you have the substance as the base, and here you have intelligent life, here you have plant life, here you have planets and stars, here you have, you see? So, so because all of existence shares the same fundamental substance, you remain connected all the time, interconnected all the time. So even though you think you're up here as an individual unit of consciousness and here's the other person and there's a tree there and there's a star there, whatever, it, from this perspective, it looks separate and different. But at the base underneath, like everything came out of the same thing. So if you go back to consciousness, you connect to all that is instantaneously because it's it's because it's everywhere because you are actually everywhere so that's the trick the trick is to know is that's the mastery is to know how to transfer back and forth my focus from my individual individuality to the aspect of me that is all that is that is universal consciousness because it, that's still me, the base is still me, and that little thing is still me. So the mastery is to go back and forth to know how to retrieve information from the larger aspect of you and bring it through the human aspect of you upon command. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And I'm like, it's just how to do that, Caroline. <laughs> Sorry. How do we do that. How do we do that? Well, that, 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 this is all, these are all the courses that I taught for like 20 years, by the way, they're all on my website now because I taught so much. There's one course called mastering the human mind, um, mm -hmm. which is, you know, kind of takes you through, there's a course called about, you know, called the guidance system, mastering your guidance system. Like, how do you know, how do you know you're tapping into the person's liver? What if it's somebody else's liver? Like, how do, how do you discern? How do you know you get a mess, you're getting a message from your spirit guide? Maybe it's some extraterrestrial floating around, you know, kind of, you know, like making it look or sound like a, you know what I mean? Like, how do you discern? Because we're not trained. Nobody teaches us any of that stuff. But, and then when we're adults, we're supposed to know like how to do all of this, like out of where, 
So, so that's very difficult, you know, whereas the stuff that we are taught as kids, you know, ride a bike or whatever, you know, doesn't matter. Teaching is teaching is learning, you know, so, so it, it stays with you. But then when you're 30 or 40 and you're trying to figure things out, how your guidance system work, you have accumulated so many different types of belief systems, including that there's nobody out there, stop talking to invisible friends, you know, it's that it's very hard. So that's why I developed a very specific methodology for guidance, for healing, uh, mm -hmm. the healers program, um, remote viewing, you know, all sorts of telekinesis, uh, all sorts of stuff. So it's all on the website right now. But uh, the idea is to learn these things and then to just be that meaning throughout the day, you keep using it as needed. Okay, here I'm sensing, you know, I just ate something, it's off, my stomach's off, what do I do? Instead of taking a pill, let me shift my energy, change the pH in my stomach, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, then I have a meeting, how do I prepare? I can remote view, I can sense, I can feel how to prepare. You see what I mean? Like you start to function eventually at that level. This is so fascinating. And I, I want to ask a question, even it's a little bit pre this. I'm just curious. This is so, first of all, I feel like this is the missing key for, <laughs> for all of us, right? Like, you know, cause what we're talking about, I, you know, we started with, we're all energy and it's all about really managing, focusing, tuning in to your, you know, your beautiful divine energy and how to use it for the maximum for the best, for the highest good. I am curious because um, I've done quite a few episodes on being an empath. And many, I know of my listeners identify as empath, highly sensitive. What's your experience? Do you think most of us have the ability to be empath? Is, is that connected to being more attuned to consciousness and energy? Because you know, it's funny. I'll just say really, really quickly. When I was younger, like I didn't know this either, right? I didn't have anyone to talk to. I could sense um, energy very quickly and I would either like want to be in a room with somebody or I couldn't stay or I would leave a store or I could sometimes like almost feel what was being said or I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, I just knew and I could feel people very fast. And um Sometimes that was overwhelming to be honest. Um, I just remember I was at a sleepover and I'm like, I can't stay here. I just cannot stay in this house. I cannot. The energy was not good. And I, you know, I had to like get picked up in the middle of the night. It was not fun. Um, so, you know, is there, do you think empaths and highly sensitive people, is that a specific group? Do you think we all have that ability? Is there, I don't know. I'm just curious your thoughts on that. Everybody has the same ability, but um, people like yourselves, and I'm sure people in your group as well, whoever's listening, I'm sure um, you have, you've learned to, to pay attention. That's all. You've learned to pay attention as a, as a child that you're picking up on something and let me find, feel what that something is, as opposed to you know, there's nothing there. Let me just focus on what I'm here to do as opposed to be. And so, uh, and so when you train, you program yourself to not focus on how you're feeling and what you're experiencing, you end up thinking also that you're not an empath. <laughs> so it's all about belief systems and uh, the way you, you chose to what you focus on. But I think everybody has the ability everyone. Mm. I'm so glad you said that. I, I, I feel that way too. I know this is, you've been studying this and practicing it for so many years. And I think, um, well, one of the questions you'd mentioned the guidance system or a guidance system, and maybe just to talk for a minute, um, for those that might be like, Oh, what's that? And how do I use that? Is it possible to share a little bit about our guidance system and how do we tap into that to really, to really design, manifest, live life intentionally. Yeah. So like I was saying earlier, you know, at the base, uh, there is universal consciousness. You are made of that. Therefore, you are an 
uh, universal consciousness and you also are the individual unit of consciousness the, the the human you so the connection between the two like i was saying earlier the going back and forth is your guidance system it's between this you and the larger you so that's the ultimate way of being but then you're not the only one you're also connected to other uh, consciousness out there, uh, you know, other units of consciousness that I personally call the spirit family, meaning these are, um, these are similar types of consciousness that, um, you know, I mean, it's a very long conversation. I've written it in my books, but uh, before you decide to incarnate, you are part of you know like a family like a spirit family though not not human and so so you normally when you look at the earth and say okay i think i'm going to go down to this crazy planet and hang out <laughs> for a few hours who wants to come you know it's like so normally it's it's a very it's a purposeful um you know uh incarnation it's never just to hang out and waste time or whatever and so because of that normally you the agreement is that you come along with assistance with help and uh, this help comes in different forms so sometimes it's like i said other um, beings like you that share the exact same consciousness and then so you travel together and then some of you uh, like yourself will incarnate at a certain time, the others will stay on this side, but on the earth plane, let's say you came from the Pleiades. So you're like, let's say 10 of you, just for the sake of argument, 10 of you come down, you are in, in, in human form, the other nine are on this side of the veil. So they all act as, you know, spirit guides from this side, but you are the same. And so, so that's, also part of your guidance system so there's your higher self and you have these beings that came along with you some of them incarnate with you so uh for example in your case uh your sister or your mother you know could also be part of that group um and so you would recognize them as uh, beings from, you know, your, your spirit family because you recognize this divine lineage. And so at least you have that assistance, you know, like you get along with your mother, but you don't really get along with the dad. So there's always like somebody, you know, who's going to help you out. So there's that. In addition to this, to this group of beings, so your guidance system, therefore, is your higher self, it's this group of being, but also when you are engaged in a much larger um, uh, agreement, like you are here to do something on a planetary level, okay, so um, I'm here to, you know, disseminate uh, teachings that are for humanity or something like that, let's say. Um, then, um, I, because there are some people who incarnate, they really, it's just for them to bring their energy to bring children or something like that have, it's very specific, you know, and others don't feel guided to do any of that. They don't want to like have that life. They want to do the bigger story. There's no better or worse. It is what it is. So, but usually when you are working on a planetary level, um, you're also working on a galactic level because the planet is part of a larger cosmic organization. So then you're gonna come in, not just with your own spirit family, but you're gonna come in with other beings, even from like far away in the universe that are here also assisting you. And so, so that's why going back to the human you, so my guidance system is going to be my higher, my own higher self is going to be my spirit family. And then there's going to be this extended, you know, these larger consciousness that come in every now and then to guide me. So because of that, how do you know <laughs> who's talking to you? <laughs> you know, how do you know? Do, am I making this up? Like I just heard, you know, go talk to Caroline, interview Caroline. Like, yeah. where did that come from? You know, like. Uh, so, so, so is it this, is it that, or whatever? So that's the training is for you to discern 
the different types of energy, different types of frequencies, uh, the, from what point in the universe they could er originate, what type of being they are, because not all beings are the same. Uh, and so, and that, knowing that tells you a lot about what these beings can do. You know, we think it's only like angelic forms, but that's not true at all. There's different kinds of beings that are doing all sorts of maneuvering, moving energy, transferring, transmuting energy, uh, the, moving the magnetic field of the planet. I mean, there's all kinds of beings doing different things. So it, it's, it's so much bigger than what people think. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, my mind, my cute brain is like, Oh my gosh, this is so fascinating and so expansive. So I love this conversation. I think it might be interesting if we could, um, you mentioned, I'm like spirit guides and you mentioned other planets and I'm guessing star systems. And we didn't talk yet about, you know, what we think of as an alien or extraterrestrial. I would love to dive into these different areas yeah. and just, you know, and I think I'm just going to invite you as you're listening. I know we have such beautiful, beautiful, I just love everyone that listens. I love this community. And I know that some of this, I always say like, feel into it and, you know, you can always take what you like and leave the rest and really feel as Caroline's explaining this, because I really feel like when we tune into that, as you're just talking about it. Um, and I'm curious, Caroline, because for me, I often feel that really in my heart that knowingness, um, but just to drop in and, and to take this in and really hear what she's going to share, because I think it's, it's, it's powerful. And it's, it's, um, I always say not mind blowing. We don't want that mind glowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so here we, so for example, like how is it that some people channel like the Pleiadians or something, and then other people connect with the Arcturians and then other people talk about grays or whatever. And other people, so it's like, why aren't we all talking to the same people yes uh, you know so there's a reason like for the longest time I was like what are people talking about you know I could not relate because I at the age of five I connected with beings yeah. that came from very 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 far away in the universe like they can't even incarnate like they can't even take on a physical form mm -hmm. so 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 that these this is the consciousness that I connected with and so but going back to to your question uh, there is a specific reason why uh, we do that. When we do that, because we have different lineages. I start telling you, I started telling you that um, different people have different uh, types of consciousness. So there's the evolutionary type consciousness, meaning the material type beings that have to incarnate in a physical form to evolve. So these include not just the humans, but also, um, you know, the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. These are physical beings, you know, they're a lot more advanced than, than humans are, but they are physical nonetheless. So that's a type of category, if you will. But then there's different other there are other types of beings for example star beings they some of them can incarnate otherwise cannot others cannot and they have a different function so the point being you end up gravitating towards the lineage your your lineage your stellar your universal lineage because there's you're supposed to bring that information through everything that you're doing down here that's how we evolve the human consciousness. So if we all are bringing the Pleiadian energy, well then, so then all the humans are going to evolve eventually to become human Pleiadians. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so, so you, let's say you are a Pleiadian, you're going to bring with you your original lineage as a Pleiadian. You become a human, so you're like a hybrid. You're half human, half Pleiadian, but you're going to connect with the Pleiadians and bring that consciousness and bring out, you know, kind of uh, broadcast this unique configuration of Pleiadian human through everything you do, everything you say, every, every time you emanate energy, you are pouring into the collective consciousness, this new configuration. 
this person is going to do it with the Arcturians. This other person is going to do it, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing it with my people, <laughs> people. And so, so that fast forward 7 billion people, you know, moving forward. Now you have a new species that's very, very, you know, that, that contains all these layers and levels of lineages, stellar lineages that came to earth to evolve the DNA into the next generation and the next generation. So that's why when those who connected Pleiadians, those who, you know, it's purposeful to reestablish that communication so that, uh, so that you bring that consciousness through. Was that, was that the question actually? <laughs> fascinating and fantastic. Okay. I think um, it's interesting. I'm thinking about this you know, the whole name of the show is the U is you. And the idea that I've always had is that each and every human is a, is like a treasure box that we don't even realize. And we're, what I'm hearing is, and it's interesting, I'm putting it together, really the U is you, it's like you plus all of this guidance and support. But what I've seen in, in my, in my mind's eye is that if all of us are tuning into that highest frequency of ourselves, that, you know, me is me, you is you, that that would, that would shift our consciousness, yes. which is so I've never, anyhow, as you were speaking, I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. That's what I've, that's why I'm doing this. And I, exactly. Think, let me ask you, cause I can hear people like, well, first of all, what are the different start or the different systems or names? And how do I know, like, maybe am I Lumerian? Am I from Pallades? Am I from exactly. somewhere different? Or how do we, and I know this might be hard to do in a short conversation, but is there any way to just, you know, for those listening that are like, I want to know where I'm blended in with, how would you even go about finding that? That's exactly the main purpose of my work. And I usually attract people who are like, it's like the last chapter, like they're ready to know who they are yeah. at that level uh, so that they can kind of, you know, activate like, uh, you know, that energy through them. And so people should read my book, The Divine Plan. Uh, it's on my website. And because I articulate, I kind of talk about also in the, in the class, Mastering the Human Mind, um, because we talk about all these different types of beings, evolutionary type beings, star beings, galactic beings, uh, celestial guardians, uh, the Melchizedek, the divine sons, the power controllers, the gravity controllers. So there's different uh, types and each type um, kind of has a very, very unique energy and that energy can do certain things. So for example, the evolutionary, like I said, the evolutionary type beings are all the material beings, meaning they don't have to just be on earth. You know, they could be from other planets, but they need to take on a material form so that they can evolve con their consciousness. So they keep incarnating. So now, like, let's say you come in, you take on a human form. When you're done, you go to Mars and you incarnate as a material Martian. And when you're done, you go and you, I mean, the whole incarnation cycle, you know, and then when you're done, you go and you incarnate in a Palladian body. So every time you have to take on a material body and keep expanding, expanding, expanding your consciousness, that's that category. Other types of beings, they like, angelic forms they don't need to do that that's not that's not how they evolve they evolve their consciousness by going as you know as, i mean it's it's a long conversation but to simplify by assisting you know into the spiritual growth of the material being so as they do that they grow their consciousness but they don't have to incarnate themselves for example does that make sense other types of beings for example the power controllers the power controllers their job Power controls are very funny. They're not, they're not humanoid at all. They're like, they look like a stick, actually. <laughs> they look like a rod, you know, and they're all like, um, like electricity. It's like, they look like electricity. Mm -hmm. And so these types of beings uh, maneuver and the magnetic field of planets. That's what they do. So they don't have like, you know, a digestive system and like, they, they, they're not it's a completely, you have to think completely like different yeah. type of beings 
And so these, the, the beings that come uh, connected to that lineage can do things they can move the magnetic field with their mind, for example. You see what I mean? So, and they come to a planet, they assist into the magnetic shift, the pole shifts and stuff like that. That's how they evolve. Then they go to another planet. So, so to find out who you are, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a process because obviously um, I can just go out and tell you, but the idea is for you to experience it yourself because when you discover it in your being, I mean, it's the most ecstatic thing you can have because it's almost like you finally discover who you really, really, really are. So, you know, of course there's meditations, there's techniques, it's all in the classes because that's what I've been teaching. But, um, but you know, that's how you start. And part of this, you have to start by, with your guidance system because if you don't train your guidance system to discern, then how are you going to eventually recognize, wait, I'm not this B, I'm not this type, I'm that type. And I didn't come from this planet, I, I came from that planet. So how are you gonna discern that if you haven't trained you know, your guidance system to be that accurate? So, so that's kind of how you find out. You have to do a little bit of training uh, read about all the different types of being. I don't know of any, I mean, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I've never heard um, of the types of beings that I talk about in my books, um, in other books. Like, so it's usually, you know, the Pleiadians or this or that, or sometimes the, you know, the Melchizedek I heard. So, so in, in, I think, um, people can go and learn about all the other kinds so that then when they do the exercise, they can kind of feel and discern that way. I love this conversation. First of all, it's mind expansive. Like you, it, you can't, it, it's, it, I can feel people listening, like it expands your mind. And I think it also, it like brings in that we're not the only ones. This yeah. Is not alone that, you know, that we, to me, this, this, as much as it can make sense rationally, if source energy how could it just be here? It, you know, to me, it feels like it would be, frankly, I can't get my head around infinite, but you know, something like that, like it would be an expression in every expression that you can imagine. So as I'm listening, you know, it actually feels like what we're talking about is we're opening in a way, who's our family. I mean, if you think exactly. about consciousness, if we're all connected, even, you know, the stick energy beings, I, I got an image, like everybody, it, it just changes the whole conversation about even what is the family. It's not just human family. You had mentioned earlier, even the galactic council and group, like we're in a galactic family, which I have to say it, it, as expansive as it feels, it kind of feels like, wow, there's all different kinds of ways of connecting with all kinds of consciousness, which is way more than we can probably, we can see most of us. Yes. Can you see, speaking of seeing, I'm curious, um, are you able to see people and see the beings they're working with or the planet or the star system they're with? I know that that to me is a huge gift, maybe, and maybe something we can train ourselves. I know you've been doing this for so long. Can you actually see that with humans, like where they're, you know, connected? All the to? time, all the time. That's how I, that's how I recognize the different beings and I recognize the energy. That's the point. Yeah. And that's how I, that's the reason why I made these classes so that, because I could see, I was like, wait, this is, this person is not, this type of being is not the same as that one. It's like, oh my God, you know? So, so, so that's, that's how I, um, I mean, I can see yours. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's so yeah. Of course, I can, and then I train people to do that so that they can learn to do it for themselves and for others as well. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, that's the point. I mean, why are we here? Like to just like work and like you know buy stuff and go out. Like what's all this it's stupid otherwise you know but but you know like that's why we're unhappy because we're just going about life yep. just kind of doing stuff not really having 
a real profound purpose. And the profound purpose is to really, really, really discover who you are. What kind of energy? Where did I come from? What part of the universe I came from and why? Yes. I'm telling you, this is the ultimate joy. Ultimate. It's like, because that's at the core of everything you do throughout the day. It justifies everything. It justifies why you look this way, why you talk that way, why you pick this family. It's like you see your whole prenatal agreement. Mm -hmm. And when you do, it's like you have a bird's eye view, but what from where, you know, it's not a past life. I'm talking yeah. what part of the universe you came from. That's not a past life. That's like the origin of you. And that is, would become at the core of everything you do and your choices, your choices will change. Yeah, you yeah. see, that's why it's kind of like the core, the base of the base of, the, of, of everything. Uh, but it takes courage to go there. I mean, not, you know, it, it's not so difficult. It's just that people are conditioned and have the belief system that when you start asking those questions, it's almost like you're going to lose like your day job or something like, you know, like you're going to be like, you're going to like quit your job and go to like some mountain, like in the Himalayas or, and be meditating all day. And like, it's not like that. I didn't do that. I didn't ever, I've never been to an ashram in India, whatever. Like I've never, you know what I mean? Like. I grew up in a big city, you know what I mean? Like, so, so you can do these things, uh, to transform your life, to make it really, really, really profound and meaningful without fear. But people have that belief system that going there is like going to change. What if I realize I'm married to the wrong person? It's like, Ooh, what do I do now? Or so, you know what I mean? So these fears kick in and they stop you from really, really discovering who you are, what you came to do and what, you know, what your purpose is. And also to me from being truly happy. Oh, I think what you're saying, I mean, it's resonating a hundred percent, which is partly why I'm like, we must have this conversation because that's the, to me also the the whole point is to discover that and then to be it so that I, I always have this image of everyone was really allowing themselves to do that. Like, what would that look like? What would, what would that look like? I'm curious, this is a question that just popped in. I hadn't thought of it before in your experience with all these different dimensions and systems. And, you know, something I've thought about a lot is the you know, a lot of the emotions we experience here on earth, especially the ones like fear and sadness. And are these emotions that you have tapped into that exist in other? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause <laughs> part of me is like, no. why did we come here <laughs> to experience some of these? Um, I don't, I, I always used to feel like I, I will be honest. I, I, I hope it's okay to share this. I used to, I used to feel like I could feel myself somewhere else where I'm like, it felt very light and very joy, very different. Yes. Uh, very different. Yes. <laughs> just, I really have had images of that. And I think I should not dismiss that yet here on, you know, in this planet, we do have, especially, you know, and I think I'm curious what you feel with the last two years, what's going on. It's really upped the fear for a lot of people what's happening. And I'm kind of asking two and one, but about these emotions. And then what do you, what do you feel is the greater lesson of what's happening today? Well, the entire emotional system is a human system. So you are right on, like in, on other planets there, there is no, there are no emotions. So that's why we're also like awkward about this whole thing. Like, we don't know, uh, you know, like how to process anger and fear and confusion and everybody's very confused about emotions you know so but here on earth the emotional system is your guidance system but again nobody teaches us that mm -hmm. so technically technically when you are perfectly aligned and you are trained you you are using your emotional system to navigate so I'm doing something, it feels good. It feels a hundred percent from a heartfelt place, you know, aligned. It feels 
based on love, keep going, you know? Uh, when it's not, it means, okay, stop. Let's see what's going on here. Why is it misaligned? Clear it, change it, adjust it, shift it. Then keep, then try something else and keep going as long as it feels good. So basically it's like the emotions, it's either green light or red light. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if it's positive and it from the heart, yeah. because what happens, we're so confused that we end up convincing ourselves that, that we feel good. Like, so for example, we are um, in a toxic relationship or addictions, hello. Um, so we, we, we start to think, okay, I'm really unhappy deep when I'm in my, I'm really unhappy, but maybe that's how I'm supposed to be like relationships are hard and you have to work at it. And there's all these belief systems um, and you have to pay your dues. You know, there's all these, like, you know, it's normal that you go through this and you have to accept your limitation. There's all these like long belief system that convince you uh, that, well, maybe that's the level of happiness I should be at and I'm just going to go with it. So you start to change the true um, guidance system that you came with, mm -hmm. which is, wait, it doesn't feel good. Stop right there. <laughs> you know, ask the correct questions before you convince yourself, you start, before you pile up all the justification why you don't want to ask the questions. You know what I mean? So, so that's the problem. Same with addictions, of course, you know, like I take something, it starts to feel good. Well, it's helping me ease the pain, you know, so it's okay. And before you know it, you know what happens. So the guy, it's, it, it, when you come from a different planet and you're so sensitive and you kind of remember where you came from, this whole guidance system thing is so awkward. It's so annoying it's so frustrating and it feels very primitive like oh i have to feel pain i have to feel yucky in order to make a choice i have to feel separation it's like very very weird uh, but um again if you, if you kind of look at it from a perspective of wait it's just my guidance system it's just like as long as it feels good i'm from a heart i'm going to keep going if not i'm i am choosing to pay attention I'm going to stop and be in the heart and ask the correct question, no matter what the outcome is, because if I did it this way, eventually that's going to lead me to true happiness. But people are afraid to go through the process. So that's what I think about emotional system. It sucks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Mean, it's like, what? You know, what is this? I don't want to feel anything. I just want to like go, you know? Oh, I appreciate the real, the realness of that. I mean, it's like, I, I just like, why? I mean, sometimes, especially empath. I mean, you know, you should know. Uh, some days I feel so devastated by the collective energy, huge amount of sadness, huge amount of depression. I know it's not even mine, but you feel it. It's, it is so strong. Yeah. And it's like, why? I don't want to, you know, so, so. It's definitely hard. So, but just try to bring it back to the idea that it's just a guidance system. It's just telling you what's going on. Don't kind of buy into it like it's you, like it took over your life. It's just, it's just telling you right now, this is what's happening in the world. It's telling you right now the choice you just made, maybe not the best, but you have time to change it, and so on and so forth. Oh, I, I, this, I love this and it, I will not go into the story, but it, it's really resonating what you just said. And it's like, yeah, it's just not always fun. I gotta be honest. I have oh. to myself, like, I really rather not feel that right now. Thank you very much. I'd like to go, you know, kick it back. <laughs> where it's, yes. Just it's so exhausting. <laughs> and sometimes like when I turn into other beings, you know, like, yeah, and there is no emotions like that. It's like, oh, I just want to like do that. You yeah, know? yeah. You just well, and so I'm curious, and I, I I would love to hear your thoughts, you know, 
there's the concept of obviously angels and some of the more well-known angels. I, I won't list them all, but of course, Archangel, the archangels, Michael, Raphael, all, you know, we have the family, the family of angels. Is Would you, from your experience and understanding, are the angels just as much part of the family of consciousness, just like we would have the Palladians or the um, Lumerians or the, I don't know, I'm, I could go into. To yeah. Yeah. So the angelic forms that the, the angels are closer to the evolutionary type. Remember, I mentioned the material beings, they work very, very closely with them. But the archangels have a different, it's like a different category, even though it sounds like the same, but the archangels are more of a universal type consciousness. So they work on a bigger kind of more like, let's say the entire collective consciousness or the entire planetary system. So it's a different, whereas like angels would be helping individual people. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So um, the archangel energy is, is very, very extraordinary. Yeah. I'm just thinking for those, especially as empaths, especially those who are sensitive when, you know, honestly, when there's fear or frustration or sadness and, you know, I find myself, um, you know, sometimes I laugh, I bring in humor a lot, but I will often just, um, you know, hey, like wherever you are, <laughs> whoever you are, you have permission to come in and help me out right now. Like, come on in. And I'm curious, just in your experience working with angels, with the archangels and bringing that energy um, and maybe loved ones, you know, I just had this situation. I was talking to a, um, a former client and friend. He lost his wife and we were in a, um, one of my communities were speaking and I, there was a blue light over him. And I said, she is here. I can feel her. And, and he made a comment about her being dying and dead. And, and I heard something that said, I'm not dead. And it's funny, I'm not British. He is, she was, and I heard it in an accent and I thought, okay. So she felt, you know, she felt here. And I'm just curious, cause I think for so many of us, right. When, when you lose somebody or that you're going through something challenging, it's so helpful to feel and know, you know what? I am, it might be on the other side of the veil, even if I can't see it with my eyes, there is consciousness that was my beautiful grandmother, that was, that is um, that angelic force that is here to support. It's making me want to cry, even ask this question so I can feel like, I, I know I lean on this a lot. I'm curious, do you use that? Do you lean on that energy? What do you, what do you see and feel with? Yeah, I personally, that's part of the discernment and the classes I teach is to know exactly who you're summoning because a lot of people aren't trained to recognize the energies. Sometimes you're saying, you know, hey, whoever's here who can offer me help, come on over. And sometimes, I mean, most of the, I mean, you would think usually it's a benevolent energy, but there's also not so nice energies and they could take advantage of your vulnerability at the time. And so, um, cause I've seen that happen before. So, uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, if you do a specific meditation, I call it connecting to source, you know, kind of know how to protect your energy field and learn to discern as much as possible. So you can only summon, this is what I recommend only summon your own spirit family. Uh, I wouldn't summon, you know, just any extraterrestrial who just hanging out, unless I'm doing something specific, like a sort of class for something, you know, uh, but, but I only summon that en energy because it's my own lineage, just like my own consciousness, my own stream of consciousness. Or speaking of Archangel, like Archangel Michael energy is a very specific energy. You can say that, but, but I personally would not say like whoever's out there, um, you know, to come or, you know, or a very specific energy, a deceased relative that, you know, that's, it's one thing as well, as long as you're specific. And so what happened for me is, uh, is that at the age of five, I connected with the energy, the energy that came to me was my lineage. And so that was part of the purpose is for me, for my brain 
to uh, re to program itself to recognize that signature so that later I only ask for that. Mm. I'm not interested to know what the Palladian guy has to say to tell me about what job. I'm interested to know about what my lineage because that they know about my story. Does that make sense? That's my lineage. So I could ask the Palladian for something else, you know, but so I feel this is a very important distinction. Mm. This is so, you know, and I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to be more specific. I usually say those for the highest good of me and all those I'm here to serve. So I, but I don't, but I'm not, I could be more specific. I, and I more like, specific ask meeting. for just your spirit family. Yeah. That is so helpful. Or just Archangel Michael, like specific Archangel. Right. This is, we obviously, everyone, all of us listening and here, we need to read the divine plan. I'm like going to get that as soon as we're off. Of this. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, Caroline, this, I, I feel like we opened this, uh, I, yes. I talked to you for hours and I just thank you for, you know, I think it, it started with what we, the, the beginning of this conversation, remembering it's all energy, losing light. Yeah. It's all consciousness. And, yeah. um, you know, when you look at it that way, this feels very, like you said, when you were five, it felt natural. Why, why wouldn't we have all different kinds of consciousness out there? This is, this is just an expanded view and, oh God, I just, so mm -hmm. before we wrap, I usually like to ask my guests, they're called, I call them heart flares where there might be a message or something on your heart. Either I didn't ask it or is coming through you. And please, like you have as long as much time as you want. Oh, well, actually, before before that, maybe I just we something we didn't talk about, which I feel is very helpful and important, is my last film called Superhuman. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Superhuman, the invisible made visible. Uh, the reason why I feel this is very important and very, very helpful, it's because it really demonstrates uh, on camera how your mind affects the physical reality. So there's all these experiments, scientific experiments that we do, and then it shows remote viewing, it shows telekinesis, it shows how you can change the pH in water. Uh, with your mind, it shows how you can, you know, read blindfolded, you know, see behind your back, you know, stuff like that. So um, it's never been done this way before uh, on camera. So uh, the reason why I think this is very important is because as you watch it, I feel it's going to give you a level of empowerment and kind of a sense of confidence and tools you know, tools uh, to start doing all of these things because, you know, we talked about guidance system, about being sensitive, but this is also about mastering the mind, the intention, you know, like when you want to move a physical object, you, you know, it's one thing to say, okay, I want this physical object to move. It's another thing when you train yourself to know exactly, wait, do I move? Do I increase the heat? around the object and it moves or do I change the magnetic field or all kinds of things come up that you learn how your consciousness moves things, uh, maneuvers the physical world and the physical reality. And then you can apply that to create your, your daily life. So it's extremely empowering um, and so people can go to superhumanfilm.com and see and see like all the where they can watch it. It's like everywhere, you know, um, Amazon or Tubi or Pluto, or whatever. They can watch it for free and um, and, um, and and learn these tools. But the energy in the film, too, is going to give them this boost, I think. So that was one thing I wanted to say. How about Oh, I'm so sorry. I was going to yeah, take you to do, I, I, I'm so glad you brought it up. We went into this other, yeah. uh, and I had it as one of my first questions. And I, I loved this film. I remember your hands. It was just, you did so many amazing experiments when you changed the pH, when you, I mean, yes. 
How, how long did it take to film this? How, what was that experience like? Like this film, I'm so glad, I'm so glad you brought it up because it was, it was so potent. I felt like I came away, like, why are we not learning yeah. kindergarten? Like, and yes, all yes. Yeah. Amazing. And for kids too, a lot of parents will watch this and see like, wow, we can do this now. I mean, learning, watching kids like ride a bike, play ping pong, completely blindfolded, you know, seeing remotely, you know, seeing behind their back. And so it's like, it's, it's so empowering and so, and very different. And so I really, really want to encourage everyone to go watch it, especially it's available for free. I mean, you know, you have to, you know, sign up or whatever to, well, actually you don't have to sign up. It's Pluto, uh, Tubi TV is all free. If you have Netflix, uh, I don't know, just you go to superhumanfilm.com and you'll see, and I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. So that was that. In terms of a message, you know, it's kind of connected. The words that's coming to mind, um, coming to heart, <laughs> is the word confidence. So it's interesting because I was just talking about the film being so empowering and giving you that confidence. And uh, the message that's coming to the public that's listening to this, I feel like you know that you can do this. You know that we are speaking the truth. You know that you're capable of these things. Uh, the one thing that's missing is your confidence. It's like you're not letting, um, you're letting doubt mm -hmm. kind of interfere with your, with your uh, expansion and stepping into your powers. So that's the message this, that's coming through today to this audience. Uh, so how do you go about that is, first of all, intend, you have to ask, <laughs> I want to release my lack of confidence, my doubt, um, my fears from every cell in my body, every cell in my brain. I'm letting go of the programming that uh, I need I, am, I have lack of confidence. I am letting go of this belief system and programming from every cell in my brain, every cell in my body, my conscious, my subconscious, my cellular memory. Breathe in. And as you exhale, you imagine particles of energy leaving your body, leaving your body. And then you bring in just the frequency of confidence, confidence, trusting you, believing. That's all you need. Just like that energy of confidence coming through you, filling your heart, filling every cell in your body and say, this is the real me, the new me. And so it is. And so it is. That's what came through. I don't know. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh my gosh. I it's spot on. I can feel, I just, the piece about the doubt and the fear, what I, I felt when you were saying that is, um, it was beautiful, just releasing it from the cellular memory, the cells, yeah. every, and then inviting in this energy of confidence and let it wash through. I really, I could, I could feel that Caroline. That was beautiful. Awesome. Um, <laughs> amazing. I hope you'll come back another time because I for sure, for sure. So Plus, I have a new movie it. too. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yes, your new movie. Do you want to share really briefly about? Well, I, it's it's still early, but it's going to be out in May, so we'll have to come back at that time. But I really would love for everyone to watch Superhuman and really the, inv the Superhuman, the Invisible Made Visible, and kind of give us their feedback because. I get all these emails and all these like messages on social media that it changed their life and they got empowered and this. So it's just so, uh, so nice to feel like yeah. people are getting the tools and are getting that energy just by watching the film, you know? So I would love to get that feedback and, but I'll definitely come back. 
Thank you so much. So everyone, you've got to watch this film, Superhuman, and we're going to put everything in the show notes, but it's superhumanfilm.com, as Caroline said. And Caroline, you are just a gem. This was, oh my gosh, I... I am like feeling on a high. I just loved connecting with you. And, and I want to just also thank you, my beloved listener, our uh, soul family for being part of this, uh, this beautiful expansive community and for what you're doing to be your USG you and to expand your consciousness and to bring in the guidance, as Caroline said, from your lineage. Now we have more tools and make sure you also get, she has so many books, but the divine plan, um, we'll have all of that listed. And I just thank you for being here today. And I'm so grateful. 